Today's video is brought to you by Ewin Racing, the best source for gaming chairs and desks for those long gaming sessions. We have a playlist for our Ewin chair and desk videos linked in the video description. Save 30% off everything using the discount code TECHDEALS. More details at the end of the video. We have a question about RAM upgrades. If you currently have 32 gigabytes of RAM, is it worth going to 64? Rogue, what's the specific question? So the question is from Miko. He currently has 32 gigs of RAM, really nice RAM. He has two monitors, he has two browsers, he has lots of tabs while gaming, and he wants to know if he would benefit um, from an extra 32 gigs of RAM. Well, you know, it's interesting that you asked this question. I just did this myself at home. Now, big disclaimer, because I'm sure this detail will get missed on some people. I know it did when I tweeted out a picture of this. My home gaming PC is a home gaming PC. Some people have said to me, well, of course you went to 64 gigs. You're a content creator and make 4K YouTube videos. You need more RAM. My work machine has had 128 okay. gigs of RAM for nearly two years now. That's separate. My home gaming PC is a home gaming PC. I do not edit video. I do not make YouTube comment on it. I play World of Warships, League of Legends, uh, XCOM 2, XCOM 2, City Skylines, Star Wars: Old Republic. Yeah, I, I play games on it with this lovely woman right here. So here's the thing. I have, briefly, an i9-9900K, 8-core, 16-thread machine at home. I've got a bunch of very nice SSD space in there because I hate hard drives, and so it's a nice premium build with all my games and programs installed on SSDs. I do have external hard drives for like uh, uh, documents, data, video, you know, personal video files, stuff like that, but all the games and everything are installed on SSDs. You haven't lived until you go all SSD in your build. Like all of your games and all of your programs on SSD, it really is a nice, nice experience. And if you're ever short space, upgrading that is, be, not having to shuffle data around is really nice. That's not the topic of the video, but it is very nice. On my desk, I have two 1440p monitors. The one in front of me is a 34 inch ultra wide. It's a 3440 by 1440p, 100 Hertz refresh, Acer Predator X34. And off to the side, I have a standard 27 inch 2560 by 1440 60 hertz display. That is for browsers watching YouTube videos. I like to watch YouTube videos while I'm playing games. Um, just it keeps me entertained and I catch up on what's going on on the web because that's what I do. That's what you, do. you watch videos, you watch Twitch streams on yours. You've got a similar setup over on your side. Now I had 32 gigabytes of RAM and the kind of games I play aren't the sort of games I think a lot of people would think, oh, well, come on, you, 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 you know, you don't need 32 gigs of RAM. XCOM 2, City Skylines, Star Wars The Old Republic, the massively multiplayer online role-playing game that is nine years old, that, that does not need a ton of RAM. World of Warships, free-to-play game. I have played The Division 2 and Ghost Recon Breakpoint and stuff on there, but I don't play a lot of AAA games. I really don't. I play those other games. So 32 gigs should be plenty. A few Chrome tabs, watching a YouTube video wouldn't be a big issue. And for some people, it isn't. But I do have a number of things running in my task tray, and this is an important disclaimer. I'm gonna show you a screenshot here in a second. I've got Backblaze, which I highly recommend, and if you're not all using it, then you hate your data. It is by far the best online backup service, 100% recommended, nine year paid customer, long before I've been on YouTube. Link in the video description below. It is an affiliate link, but seriously, a very happy paid customer. Um, Backblaze is running and backing up all of my data. OneDrive and G Drive are syncing my cloud services. Correct. Synology is running, the, the, the Synology Drive client is running. I actually sync, I have an external drive array at home. My work NAS syncs over the internet via VPN to my home machine, providing me an offsite backup from work. Correct. Which then Backblaze backs up to the internet. Correct. And then there's various game launchers. I've got Snagit running and a few other tools and things. There's probably about 15 things in my task tray at any one point in time. There is. And I am not the kind of person who believes 
that I should have to close Chrome tabs just to play a game. I often have many open, organized into several different separate windows because I'll put like all my YouTube videos in one Chrome tab and then email and stuff and social media in another Chrome tab. And if I wanna look something up, I'll actually open a, um, a new Chrome window to keep it organized. Yep. So I'll usually have like three or four actual windows, windows open with, with separate some. tabs in each to try to keep it organized. I very much run under the philosophy. My computer serves me. I should not have to serve my computer. And the number of people who post, well, just close all your programs. What do you have things loaded? When I want to play a game, I close all my launchers. I shut down my web browser. I turn off Windows updates. I turn off antivirus. Uh, we can't have anything running. This is not 2003. You don't have to do that anymore. Well, you do if you have a really old CPU. I think for some people that's an old habit because back in single core and even the early dual cores, you yeah, did you, need to shut everything down. You had to do that. And RAM used to be much more limited. But if you could afford it, which I think micro, what is his name? By, micro Buka? Burger? Mm -hmm. MB, we're gonna call him MB. MB. He's got a nice system. If, if you've got the money, you can make your computer serve you. When I click a link, when I open a, a new window, when I launch a game, when I open a game launcher and it has to download an update, I don't want to have to go, oh crap, I better go make a cup of tea or you know, go, go to the bathroom or go for a walk because it's going to take forever. If I wanted things to run poorly, I'd get a console. Shots fired. So I want my computer to respond whenever I want it. When I alt tab, there shouldn't be a delay. When I alt tab over to my window or if I want to switch things, in fact, there have been times I want to run two games at the same time. I've had Star Wars The Old Republic and World of Warships open simultaneously and I'll go over and I'll like set up crafting or set my companions to run missions or do something really quick or be chatting in Star Wars and I'll, and I, and I'll actually alt tab between two games running. I want my computer to do that. I don't want to have to close something. Or like, she'll sit down and say she's got an hour to play with me or half an hour, you know, do, do I want to join her for a game in World of Warships? So I'll go over to World of Warships, I'll division up with her, and we'll play a game, but I'm not going to close. You know, I'll leave my characters running, and as we queue for battles, I can go over and some of my companions like do crafting and missions, Correct. and then tab back over. Mm -hmm. I should be able to do this. You should. So I upgraded my personal gaming machine at home to 64 gigs of RAM. It's not very expensive, a hundred bucks. It really isn't that expensive anymore. What do you get for that? A more responsive machine that does not use your SSD for swap, that does not compress RAM, that is quicker to alt tab because everything can be stored in RAM and cached. Windows will use all of your available RAM for disk cache and for preloading and prefetching if you have enough RAM. Oh, well. Previously, I was maxed out on my RAM. I was using uh, 80 to 85% active, but I had about four gigabytes typically of compressed RAM. Plus I was using anywhere between 20 to 25 gigabytes of SSD swap. Now a lot of it's standby, a lot of it's programs that aren't actively running. And so it ran fine but it does run better and the whole thing is a little bit smoother. It's not anything, it's not a benchmark. You know, sometimes people go, well, why don't you, why don't you benchmark that and show us? What do you want me to show you? That the machine is more responsive when I alt tab? This is not, not everything about it using a computer is about your frames per second. Mm -hmm. I play World of Warships. It's frame locked to 75 frames per second. Whatever, I don't care, it's fine. I have a 2070 Super in there. The, the weakest part of the whole computer is my video card, it but is. it's fine. So, I might or might not be happy having upgraded my machine. I am actively using 61% of my 64 gigs of RAM. There is, actually in this particular case, but I was doing a lot at the time, um, there actually is compressed RAM here, and we have committed all of it with a reserve of 80.9 gigabytes of RAM. It's currently got 26.3 gigabytes cached. This is all cached right here. This is waiting to be written to disk. I think it was actually downloading something at the time, to be honest, although the drives don't have any activity. 44% um, CPU. I was definitely running a game when I did this. 
But 32 gigabytes would be a joke. Yeah, that would be. To be completely blunt, now, running two games at the same time or having your Synology NAS sync to your local machine while backing it up to Backblaze is not perhaps maybe the most typical thing in the world. 128 gigs of RAM at home would not be stupid. No, not, not for how you use The it. next upgrade we do at the office for our work machines will be 256. 256. And people say no gamers need more than 16 gigs of RAM. Now, that's not to say that all gamers need. See, here's where people don't hear. I have seen multiple people, including respected reviewers, you know who you are, who have said gamers don't need more than 16 gigs of RAM. Hogwash. The correct statement is all gamers do not need 16 gigs of RAM but the majority of gamers now do. If you play Overwatch and League of Legends, no, you, you, don't, you don't need 32 gigs of RAM. You really don't. Even if you're live streaming, you don't. But if you play anything newer than that, or if you multitask, or if you have two monitors as this question has, mm -hmm. you're out of your mind with 16 gigs. What, is, what, what, is, what are you thinking? If you have 16 gigs of RAM, going to 32 is 50 bucks. If you have two monitors and you have web browsers open while you're gaming and you have 16 gigs of RAM, join not last year. The, stop being silly. That's ridiculous. At least go to 32. But in this case, going to 64, yes. It's 100 bucks. If the $100 is not going to break your monthly budget, Windows will use it. It will reduce the right amplification and the swap to your SSD extending its life. It'll make your machine a bit more snappy. Mm -hmm. It gives you a bit more room to breathe for the future. Why wouldn't you? And small uh, free advice, anybody watching this who actually has 16 gigs, buy 32, split the difference and go to 48. If you have two eight gig sticks giving you 16, you can buy two 16 gig sticks of the same speed if it's 3200 by 3200, if it's 3600 by 3600, whatever, but buy the same speed and timings. And because you're installing them in dual channel and you'll alternate them, it'll be 816, 816 in your four memory slots. You'll go to 48 gigs, it'll run in dual channel, it'll be just fine. And you'll have 48. So more than 32, but less than 64. And it, I mean, 48 would be enough. Mm -hmm. 64 is on the verge of overkill for a lot of people. Not for me, but, you know, whatever. Um, but 32 for a lot of people is starting to not be enough. It wasn't for me. And there's at least some percentage of the... I mean, to be clear, most people should be on 32, not 64. But if you have to ask the question, if you're even asking, yeah. you might be the one <laughs> that should go to 64. Exactly. And here's another question. What's the value of your computer equipment? Your monitors plus your computer? If you've got two or three grand on your desk, if you've got two nice premium monitors, if you've got like 800 plus dollars between your monitors and you've got 1,500 to $2,000 for the computer, going to 64 is 100 bucks. 100 bucks to make your several thousand dollars worth of computer run better. That strikes me as a cheap investment. Now, if you have an $800 computer and a $200 monitor, well, of course, that's yeah. silly. You should upgrade exactly. other things first. That, that sort of finessing detail gets lost in generic advice. It does. Do you have anything to add to all this? No. Do you want to go back to 16 gigs of RAM? No. Do you want 64? Oh, when I upgrade my six core, 12 thread chip. Well, you should do that. Well, I've got them two right now, but I still have to wait for my computer. Well, that's partly because you have two monitors, you multitask and you have a six core chip. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a bit snorry. But six cores is all gamers. We're not getting into that. Anyway, um, there you go. There's your answer. 
Ewin Racing has a wide selection of chairs to fit all shapes and size of gamers. Ranging from petite to cuddly, they have something for every type of person. Not just sizes, but colors and material options as well, including red, blue, purple, pink, orange, and more, plus cloth and leather choices as well. We have over half a dozen chair and desk videos in a playlist in the video description, so be sure to check those out. We also have a special offer just for Tech Deals viewers. Save 30% off everything using discount code TECHDEALS using our link in the video description. We have used Ewin gaming chairs for three years in our office, sitting on them for up to eight hours during our marathon live streams. They are very comfortable and we are happy to work with Ewin to bring you this special discount and recommend Ewin for all your gaming chair and desk needs.